he was like, man, dude came to my cell the other day and he brought me some things and he talking about we good to commerce every day and then just he going to take care of me and this and that. And I heard about these stories about dudes trying to leave candy bars and honey buns on, on dudes' beds and then try to violate them. I said, did you get the stuff back to him? He was like, no, I ain't give it back to him. I said, did you eat the stuff? He was like, yeah, I did. I said, you need to get a hold of some steel because you're going to need it. You're going to have to get you're going to have to get some steel and you're going to have to apply that steel inside of Purple Passion because he's going to want something back from you. And I'm pretty sure you know what he's going to want from you. I said, why did you take this up? He was like, man, the way he gave it to me, he was like being aggressive with it. And then before I could really say anything, he just turned his back and just walked off. So I'm like, here I go with these items. And, you know, so I just said, man, forget it. Go down to this cell right here. Ask for this person. And he's going to supply you with it. You know what? I said, carry that thing with you at all times. When you go to the yard, when you go to the shower, when you, wherever you go, you need to carry that. Because this guy, he the type that up. He the type that if you don't give it to him, he might creep up on you and knock you out and take it from you. He like, well, you for real? I said, yeah. He said, man, how can I get out of this? I said, I mean, there's a couple, there's a couple ways you can get out of it. You can push that blade on him or you can check in, go to the hole, tell the guards that you fear for your life, drop a kite on him. Then I asked him, how many times did this dude approach you? He was like, man, bro, he came over here every day for the last three days. He done came over here bringing me stuff. I said, so you mean to tell me he been coming over here for the last three days? He like, yeah, man, he been coming over here, like bringing me stuff, man. And I, I told, I tell him every time, like, I'm good, I'm straight. But he'll just drop the stuff off and just walk off. And Steve was like, how is he able to come between the pots like that? I said, I don't know, man. He got pulled up in here, so... You know, some of these guards let him do what he want to do, or he probably lied and said that he had to get something from over here and got a pass. I don't know, but I'm going to be real with you. He like young white boys, and he trying to groom you. So he like kind of slid down on my wall and put his hands on his head like this, like, man, man, I'm not finna, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not about to be a victim. I am not about to be a victim. I said, hey, you need to click up with your own race, man. He like, man, I'm not about to click up with them, man. Them dudes, man, heck no. Nah. I heard they, I heard that they be prostituting dudes. I'm not about to join them. I said, eh, eh. I said, I mean, that's not, that's not the, that, that ain't all. I said that ain't always the case. I mean, you gotta show yourself strong. You know, you gotta knock a couple of heads loose, knock a couple of screws loose or something. Show them that you don't get down like that. I said, one-on-one, -on -one, you ain't going to be able to defend yourself against Purple Passion, man. It's not going to happen. Dude, too strong. So you're going to have to, you're going to have to click up, man, with, with, with a group in here, man. And unfortunately, the only protection you got is the white boys. The gang that you don't want to join, but you're gonna to have to. And he like, man, no, I'm not. I'm not doing it. I, I'm. I'm not doing. It. I, I'll just. I'll just take my chances. So he got up, walked out of my cell. Later on that day, me and my homeboys walk in the yard, and one of my homeboys like, yo, hey, you know, Passion got his eye on that white boy in your pod. I said, yeah, I know. He was like, man, hey, did you did you put him on game? I said, yeah. I even told him he need to click up with his own race, man, because, yo, he it's, it's it's about to get crazy for him. He was like, yeah, hey, where it is, he trying to get transferred to your pod. I said, who? He said, Passion. He trying to get, I'm like, Shh, man, this dude just, he, he, dude crazy. Next thing you know, we see guards running, and they telling everybody to get down. So we all dropping. We all laying down. I'm looking around like, man, what the heck going on? Is somebody out here fighting? Somebody get stabbed? What's going on? So they made all of us get down on our stomachs, right? Nose to the ground. So I'm just looking around and then they tell us to get up. So we get up and we have to go back to our pods and lock down. Remember when I told y'all that always be on guard while locked up. 
You remember when I told y'all, when you go to the shower room, have your drawers on? Steve ended up going to the shower room, butt, booty, naked. I wasn't there. This was just told to me through the prison grapevine. You know, in prison, men gossip. Men gossip way worse than women. I'm sorry, fellas, but it's true. And, and dudes that have been locked up, y'all know this real. The word is, Steve went up in there butt booty naked. He had his towel, he had his soap, he had his jail flip-flops. He goes in there, he get to washing up. Let me explain this a little bit more in detail, okay? When you go to the shower room, okay, have your boxers on, have your drawers on, have your t-shirt on, go in there and wash up. When you coming from the yard or exercising or something, and you and I know you want to get, I know you want to get clean and you want to get fresh. When you go to the shower, soap up, soap up your clothes, okay, soap up your drawers, soap. Put the soap on. Put the soap on your skin. You're knocking out two birds with one stone. You're getting your clothes clean, and you're getting your body clean. Rinse off, dry off, and then go to your cell. Then take your clothes off and hang them up, and then put on your new clothes. That's the process. That's how it's supposed to go. Don't go in the shower with a towel on and your drawers in your hand, and people seeing you go in the shower room like that. Word is, when he went in that shower, Purple Passion came in there after him and violated him. They said this would go on for about 10 minutes. There was three inmates that was in the shower also that witnessed this. They said that when Steve walked in there and took his towel off and got to washing up, Purple Passion came in right behind him and punched him in the back of his head and then got to violating him. The three men that was in there, they left out. All three of the men went to their cells, but one of them told the CEO what happened. That's when we heard the cold and everybody had to get down and lay down. They, they locked the whole prison down. The medical staff and the guards would go in there and extract him out of that shower room. Purple Passion would find himself in the hole for this crime. However, he ended up beating his charge. You say, huh? Wait. He violated this boy and he beat the charge? Well, let me tell y'all something. I told y'all, Passion, Purple Passion, been doing this for a very long time. Penitentiary tricks. What he did was, after he assaulted Steve, he ended up taking some hair grease and putting Steve's fingernails on it and then putting it back there. You know, when he was going through his trial and going through whatever he was going through, he said, I didn't rape him. He gave it to me willingly. He he lubed up and everything for me. Yeah, I'm a homosexual man, and he is too, and we just engaged, and we did what we did, and he slipped, and that's how he got knocked out. But I didn't rape him. He beat the charge because Steve had grease on his fingertips. If you find yourself in prison, whether you innocent or guilty, my advice to you, if you a little guy, if you a little guy and you're not confrontational, you need to get in there and start doing your push-ups. You need to get in there and get a hold of a banger. If there's a lot of gang activity and predators roaming, you're going to have to click up with somebody. You're going to have to click up with some organization. It's either victims or the victimizers. And I can give and I give y'all another story at a later date about when victims become victimizers and victimizers become victims. So Purple Passion will go on committing these atrocities towards new inmates till he finally met his fate. Some years later, he went on to violate another inmate. This inmate was a young Mexican, and this inmate was really, really crazy. So we finna get to that story. We called him Santiago. See, Santiago, he did, his English was broken. He didn't know too much English, so most of the time he had speak Spanish. He was about 25, 26 years old, but he had a smooth baby face. I'm gonna skip past a lot of things. I'm gonna get straight to the action. Purple Passion ended up cornering him in the shower. He told him to get down on his knees. 
Well, Santiago got down on his knees. When Purple Passion basically whipped out his thing, Santiago bit down on it and would not let go. You've got Purple Passion screaming, hollering, ah, ah, like swinging, like trying to punch him, right? Santiago wasn't letting go. Santiago wasn't letting go. He bit Purple Passion dingling off. The Dante Show.